The Amazing Spider-Man, a movie which will live in infamy. Or for me. Is infamy the opposite of for me? Or is it fame? In Why don't we just say in fame? The Amazing Spider-Man. I'm the amazing. That's Spider-Man. We're not the same. The two Spider-Man movies starring Andrew Garfield in the early 2010s have been a point of contention for Spider-Man fans for many years now. I personally really love these movies, and I'm about to have a PhD, so technically... I'm big, you're little. I'm right, you're wrong. But one of the best parts of these movies is... the science. Of course, you can't grow your arm back with lizard DNA. Of course, if you fall into a tank of electric eels and get bitten, you won't become electricity. I mean, how does that even work? And your tooth gap won't be filled. Trust me, I've tried. What I mean to say is the idea of science presented in these movies, using it to solve problems. And it works really well, I think. You see Peter building his web shooters. You see Gwen making the antidote for the lizard serum. You see Gwen coming up with the solution for Electra ruining Spidey's web shooters. Well, remember eighth grade science class? You magnetize a nail with a battery holds an electric charge. Yes. None of that's real, by the way. You get the general vibe that in this universe, there's a lot of technology and a lot of progress happening in the way of science. And uh, that's kind of how I think of our world too. As someone who's in academia right now, I see a lot of the advancements happening and I can't help but compare to the universe of Oscorp and Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man. It's very similar to the Spectacular Spider-Man TV show, which just got on Netflix and I highly recommend it. And I got a chance to rewatch it for the first time since I was a little kid. And let me tell you, the way they show science in that show is really special, I think. You don't get a lot of cartoons focusing on a professor trying to keep grants to keep his lab up and running. I mean, that happens in real life, guys. A lot of the dynamics you see in Spectacular Spider-Man between Kurt, Martha, Gwen, Peter, Eddie, that's all stuff that I've seen in real life. And that's, that's pretty cool. In any case, the coolest thing about both Spectacular Spider-Man and The Amazing Spider-Man is the science. But the coolest science, I think, that we saw in The Amazing Spider-Man movies was web shooters. And we see Peter working on them in both The Amazing Spider-Man 1 and The Amazing Spider-Man 2. And those scenes is what got me started. You know, that's why I'm doing what I'm doing today is because of those movies. You don't see that in Toby's, obviously, and you don't see that in Tom's. So it's a really special thing, guys, and I think we should all be pretty thankful for it. And that being said, to pay homage to this, I've decided to redesign my web shooters. Now, the cool thing about uh, this watch design <laughs> is that it's concealable, right? But the issue is, it's not super cool looking when you have the suit on. <laughs> you know, it's like you got this cool suit and then you've just got a watch. So, uh, you know, the watch thing is getting kind of old. And you've seen me use this watch web shooter to shoot web fluid and it works really well. So today, I'm just gonna be doing a little cosmetic change. And the cool thing about it is that this cover is removable and I can pretty much add whatever I want. And I've been meaning to start a collection of web shooter covers for a while now. This is a pretty cool one, but I want one based on the movies. And what better movie to choose than the first Amazing Spider-Man movie starring Andrew Garfield. The web shooters in this movie are pretty beautiful as I think most people would agree. Are they too small? Yes, they're too small. It doesn't make any sense, but that's why I'm gonna have to take some liberties with the design, make mine a tiny bit bigger, Sorry, <laughs> that's just physics. But I think what we're gonna end up with is pretty cool. I'm not gonna use the same colors of lights just because number one, I don't have them. And number two, I'm orange and blue. That's just how it works. So that's what we're gonna be using. The hardest thing to figure out is definitely gonna be how to make the web shooter light up when the web is shot because I'm not planning on adding an electrical valve actuator. Uh, I've done that if you wanna see my most advanced web shooter, that uses an electrical valve actuator, but I wanna keep this small and so it's still going to have a lever trigger. So I still need to figure out a way to add a switch inside that lever trigger that will activate the lights at the same time I activate the web shooter, even though the two are functionally unrelated. Because I'm not that good at replicating a design from a movie from scratch, I went looking online and I found this cool Amazing Spider-Man web shooter design on GrabCAD by Jacob Garza. The file was in a SolidWorks format, but luckily my favorite boy, Fusion 360, can do pretty much anything. 
So I got to work making the necessary alterations in Fusion 360. I removed the trigger and the cartridge and the nozzle, remade them to my specifications to make sure it would work with the existing hardware I had. I also separated all the parts that are supposed to light up into different pieces that would functionally work so that I could print them with transparent filament and the light could shine through. One of the most important parts of this design was to make sure that this new web shooter cover interfaced correctly with the flexure trigger that I showcased on Instagram a few months ago. But after making sure that would happen, I did a simple combination of the existing cover and the new cover, and then simply altered it so that it would work correctly. Obviously, I had to make space inside for the LEDs and the watch battery and any necessary wiring, and that got a bit tight, as I'll talk about later, but I'm pretty much just going to shove all the electronics inside. Finally, everything was ready to print, and I made sure to do it at an angle to minimize the support material. This is a pretty good practice if you're unfamiliar with it. Of course, as always, it takes a few tries to get things right, and it took me a minute to figure out exactly how to activate the lights, let alone mount them. Eventually, I decided the easiest way to do it was to mount a wire inside the lever trigger. This wire would run through the entire structure, mounted by two screws on either end. I designed the structure so the wire can be neatly tucked away. When the trigger is pressed, the two screws will make contact with electrical contacts on the web shooter body, which will close the circuit between the battery and the lights. I started wiring up the wires, and I realized that these two wires can just stick out in front and act as the contacts that the screws will make contact with. I do have specific places to mount the lights inside the 3D printed parts, but uh, other than that, the electronics were just kind of shoved up in there. Well, and uh, there you have it. A uh, The Amazing Spider-Man 1 inspired web shooter. And it uh, lights up too. I don't want any complaints that the light in the middle isn't red or that the little lights aren't green. I want these colors because these colors are my colors. And uh, I think that's, uh, that's okay. Let's see if we can get the web fluid in there. Unfortunately, I am running out of web fluid. Cool lights. All right, I shook it up a bit. Let's see. Some cool lighting. And we're out. Unless... Yeah, we're out. But we got the lighting. Like I said, I don't need to prove it to you guys. <laughs> This one's kind of cobbled together. So, you know, all the electronics are just kind of jammed in there. But it works all right. Um, definitely gonna be a better version. I'll post these STL files to my uh, STL drive for my $5 a month or more patrons. Be sure to contribute on Patreon at patreon.com slash the amazing. Um, but uh, yeah, there's no guarantee that you'll get it to work, of course. Um, but if you can jam everything in here in such a way, that'll do it. I'll come out maybe with a, a more detailed version in the future. But uh, yeah, it's a fun, cool cover for this web shooter. So I hope you guys enjoyed that little video. There's going to be a little bit more to come. Next week, we're going to talk about strengthening the web fluid, so stay tuned for that. And uh, yeah, stay safe, stay amazing. I'll see you guys in the next one.